Welcome to section 2 of this tutorial how to build command line application step by step. Now in this section we are going to learn how to work with signals. Signals are very important in command line applications because when you have a program you want to control the, um, the state of that program when the program is loading, when the program is exiting so you can do something. Later in this course we are going to see how to take advantage of the, pro the time that the program is exiting we can try to save the state of the program at that point. This is a really important concept to learn, and I hope you enjoy the video. So if you've not subscribed, please don't forget to subscribe. So this is how to work with signals in Go. All right, I'm going to create another directory here called sec2. And then I'm, I, let's create the file main.go. Simple stuff, all right? So in order to work with signal, we need the signal package and the syscall. All right. So I'm going to create a signal channel make. So this is a buffer channel. So let's go to the signal package and say notify. This signal channel is going to receive any of these signals. So let's get the sys call. The sig int for interrupt. Sys call the sig terminate. So this is this signal is going to be emitted when someone press um, Control C or Command C on the Mac. This one is going to be emitted when someone or a program issues the Q command. Like if you take the process ID and you send the Q command to it, this signal is going to be emitted. All of them will be sent to this channel. So we need to list in on this channel. And listing on the channel is very straightforward. Uh, for this, because of uh, demonstration, I'm going to list in forever on this channel. So one of the ways you can do that, of course, is the for. And our friend select. If you know, if you don't know how to do this um, select uh, way of doing things, you can let me know in the comment, and I can record a video on concurrency. When we receive anything on this channel, this this is what this code is saying. When we receive message on this channel, I want to do something. Right. Let's see. I can use printf here. Printf now. I'm going to say the name of the signal received. Right? Simple stuff. And then response. After that. We want to this we can exit the program here OS dot um exit status code of zero. Now this is going to work, but it's tricky. If we don't stop the signal, let me make it work first, then I will show you why I'm going to do this. Signal dot stop. Sig. Okay, so let's run it, go run sec2, nothing is showing, but when I press, so I'm on the max, so I'm going to press control, yeah, I'm going to press control C, and you see it's an interrupt signal received, though I didn't spell it received well, R-E-C-I, Easy. All right. So let's run it one more time. Press Ctrl C. You see? Great. So how about, let's say for some reasons, you want to also be doing something else, but at the same time, you are listening to the signal. That means you need to start the function or what you want to do in a different Go routine. So let's look at how to do that. So let me create another function here called 
prompter or something like this. I just want print. Maybe double arrow this way. That's Python style. Okay, let's grab the scanner. Buff IO. New scanner. We are going to read from OS.STD in. We have seen OS.STD out before, so this is for reading data into the command line. So we are going to look forever, then we can keep getting data from the user. Let's get the first line. Uh, scanner dot text. Okay, if I if you want, you can trim it. String dot trim space or something. And then I won't do anything fancy here. I'm just going to say um Yeah, this is what I'm going to do. Then I'll pass the line. Then we can put a new line, I think. After that, we reprint the prompt. So this is going to continue looping and looping and looping. Here, just some error handling. There's nothing special anymore. Uh, scanner, dot, if we have any error. I always try to do this error check. Um, I'm going to assume that when error state. Error. Okay, something like this. So let's see what's going on. Unreachable code. Print, we created a new scanner instance. Then for, yes, I see the error now. The mistake was Canada scan. All right, great. So we are good there. Basically, then I'm going to come here and just say go prompter. And this is going to put us in another go routine. And we can continue doing this. Of course, this is also going to be, uh, this is going to block um, for us to listen to the channel. All right, let's run it. So we are here on the prompt. I can say hello. You see, hello, Kimin, how are you? If I press Ctrl C, you see, we received the interrupt and our program exited. Lovely. So this is how you handle signals in Go. You can integrate this to, with your, your web service. You can, um, in almost anything, so imagine if we have to save the state of the program, then before we exit at this point, we can store it. In the next video, we are going to learn how to work with command line arguments. This one is packed. After that, we have to learn how to work with flags. Everything is coming together gradually and very soon you start writing beautiful command line applications.